Hi, I'm Matt Connor, and this is Concert's one and only music shop. We sell guitars, instruments, we do tuition, and we also repair. How did Steel Town Music start? I wish it was a better story, but um, my dad got made redundant, um, and um, he thought, ah, do you know what it is? I'm going to open a music shop. I was at college at a time, and I was begging him, just, just do not do that. It's a stupid idea. Um, and I knew I was going to end up getting lumped into the shop and I didn't want to be lumped into the shop at all so um, I just didn't help at all and it was my brother and my, my dad and my cousin that pretty much did everything in the shop and um, they the, did the whole place out um, and yep I just sat in the, in the background and then later on pretty much you know I got roped into doing the odd shift and then you know years went by and then before you know it I'm pretty much part of the furniture. <laughs> when we first opened, um, it was it was primarily just selling guitars. That was the name of the game, um, and uh, selling accessories. Uh, but now we've moved into tuition, which is a, a really big part of what we do, um, and um, repairs and setups, and then also into records. We sell a lot of records, and um, just a lots of little bits and pieces help you know keep all the cogs turning. How did you become a luthier? Yeah, you. You damage quite a lot of people's guitars. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that we didn't have Facebook when we when we first opened the shop. And uh, yeah, you, you, unfortunately, when you're doing that, you kind of learn the hard way, and then you you have to ring up somebody and go, look, uh, <laughs> this I've kind of made a mistake here. But that's how I learned, uh, unfortunately. Um, so you have. Jed, Jed like watched over us quite a bit. He was quite good with that. He's always been good with you know put, like hands-on jobs. Um, but eventually you've got to do it on your own and it's the mistakes that you learn from. So over years and years and years you get better and you get more cautious and then eventually you do get the hang of it, you know. What do you like the most? What I like most about being here is I'm your own boss. <laughs> What's the most rewarding thing? I think what I do enjoy the most is um, when you get a, a, a problem come in with someone's guitar and, you know, the. You, the, there's a, a big a big issue and you've got to try and dig down deep and try and find it and you know you get to like take one thing apart and that's not that and take something else apart and I, I do enjoy doing that and then eventually when you crack it you feel like you, you've, you're you pretty clever even though it was probably something really simple after all. Well again I mean like um, when we first opened the shop it, this place was covered in posters like slip up posters and like like aggressive looking things so over the years I realized that maybe if you're not a musician and you've got to be in here you might as well make the place look a bit nicer um, and then I always thought lights was always a good way to like you know mood light and then make the place chill and things and um, we get so many Naka guitars that we just can't do anything with and it seems a shame just to like you can't just give them to a charity shop because it's going to go to somebody else and they're going to try and play it so you've got to kind of retire the instrument but it seems like such a waste just to break it so you might as well make it into something else and repurpose it i did start to try and sell them but then every one i made i just really liked <laughs> so they're just kind of part of the furniture now where do you see yourself in 20 years time in in 20 years time I, I really don't. I really don't know where I'm going to be. Um, I didn't think we were going to make 17 years, to be honest. Like in in the business, so I still have that thought. I, I, I where I see myself in a year's time is is the place going to be open, and and that that's the only way I do it. And and I try not to go past. If I if I go past five years, then you know we're in concert. You're getting too big for your boots. You just got to look after the. You know the next year coming up because things change and happen so quick so I, i'm very defensive and and plus 20 years time my god now like i would like to be like on the caribbean if i can but unfortunately i don't think i am <laughs> so for people who have just recently moved to concert um, and they never met arnold um arnold is the the logo of the shop how did you become a drummer I became a drummer because my brother was a guitarist and that was that was what happened he so was he was he picked the guitar and i instantly wanted to play the guitar and then as his big brother does he said no you can't because i'm playing the guitar and then he was in a band with my cousin who just, uh, teaches here today um, and um, yeah so i was like well guitar well, I don't, and i didn't want to be a bass player no offense to ryan <laughs> but uh, uh, 
but yeah, so I just thought, I'll, I'll, I'll be a drummer, you know, and um, I had no intention to want to be a drummer. I had nothing, I, I didn't even know any drummers really, apart from like maybe Stuart Copeland at the time. And I was probably pretty much the only thing of a drummer I knew. And um, yeah, that's where it started. And that's when I first started it, I absolutely hated it. And I, I quit straight away. It was just too hard. And then eventually I got back round to it. And then that's when I, I started playing. Did being naturally left-handed and playing right-handed prove a challenge? Because I didn't know anything about how to, how to drum at the start, you didn't have a YouTube or anything, so like, I don't think it made a difference. Like, personally, I think it just, the further on you got down the line, things started being like, oh, that's easy because I've kind of got two strong hands now, you know? Um, but I didn't have a clue at the start, um, so I don't really think it made too much of a, a difference. What bands do you currently play in? I'm currently in a, a, a band called the Mitchellati Band. Um, we're like a sort of a, a blues, funk, rock trio, um, and we've been lucky enough to go touring with like the likes of Walter Trout and um, Johnny Winter um, and others. That's <laughs> quite a few, but yeah. As far as other bands go, I, I do a lot of depth work for, for other musicians and, and, and other bands, uh, which I do like to do because it means that one week you might be playing hip hop and the next you might be playing Brit pop or something, I don't know, like anything. Um, but I've just recently started another band, pop punk band, um, and that's just pretty much me living me, me, me youth again, you know, like pretend I'm 30 and just playing Blink 182 again, which is pretty good. <laughs> Um, it's just the, the cost of living, that's the biggest challenge that as, as any business has, you know. Um, it's not so much the cost for, for this business going up, it's for everybody else on the street, you know. Um, people don't have that extra jingle in the pockets that they, they normally have. Um, so that's, that's a big concern um, because, you know, effectively we are a music shop and, you know, what, do you, what are you going to pick? I'm going to have some bread and some eggs and things like that when I need milk and things or I'm going to go and buy some strings. The flip to that is most guitarists and drummers are relatively stupid so they'll go hungry to have the strings. That's probably why we're still here, you know, but yeah, you know, little things like that, like we are pretty much like a, a, a luxury for some um, to, to go and buy a record or to buy something. So with the cost of living going up and it doesn't seem to be going down, that's my biggest concern.